friends, and welcome to The League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. Today we're talking about Demacia's Wings Quinn, who was released March 1st, 2013. Also, I realized I was editing the podcast last time, and I said exploring the League of Legends champions. I did. I caught that when you said it, but I, I didn't, didn't. like... I didn't even notice that I in said my head. It. I was like, "Does she always say champ?" No, right? <laughs> I say lore. I say lore. I don't know, y'all. I'm sorry. Something was up. It's like a Mandela effect thing. It's like maybe she's always said it. I'm, just, yeah, I've I'm been not wrong paying attention. This whole time. Kazam, Shazam. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they both exist. Uh, yeah, yeah. Quinn, Quinn, and Valor. It just says Quinn on Riot. But yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. really, Valor's the star of the show. Ouch. Mm. Okay. I thought they were going to release her as Quinn and Valor, and then mm. at the time, the client couldn't couldn't handle that shit or something <laughs> like that. That is true. That is one of my really? fun facts. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's probably oh. why they re-released during the rework. That's probably why it's now Nunu and Willump <laughs> instead of just... We have the technology. <laughs> they have the technology for <laughs> double names now. <laughs> that ampersand was just fucking them up. <laughs> This is why they built the new client, by right? the way. It had nothing to do <laughs> with helping the players. They're like, we gotta be able to have two names. <laughs> we need to be able to ampersand this shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I remember Quinn coming out. So, to me, she seems like a new champion. And then she's I saw so 2013, old. and I was like, oh, no. Yeah, she's got <laughs> old lore. Not old enough, to, like, she doesn't yeah. have judgment old lore. No. But she has old lore. It's like old lore light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Summoner's Rift type bullshit, but mm. you're like, you know, uh, Institute the of War of, shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, she has a bio and a short story linked along with some concept art. She does have a much longer story that leads right up to Garen's First Shield novel. Kind of, I think we may have talked about it a little bit when we talked about First Shield, like... Yeah. What was Quinn doing before this? Because it was very <laughs> clear she was doing something. But mm. uh, that is not linked on her page. It is on Universe, but they just decided not to link it because fuck you, the reader. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I don't. I don't understand because it's like it's not an old piece or anything. No, it's, it's very brand new. Brand new. Maybe that's. It's got why. a Legends of Runeterra card in it. Like, come on. Right? Oh, really? It's got two Legends of Runeterra <gasps> cards in it. Oh, is it the doggy? Wait, who's the second one? The other one is just kind of mentioned, oh. uh, but it's who she, it's who she was trying to pawn the mission off <laughs> in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, Doggy's the other one. Oh well, well, owner of Doggy. I figured I couldn't remember either of their names off the top of my head though. No, you got it with Doggy. 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 <laughs> the Doggy. So what's Quinn sound like? Quinn sounds like a lady. I she sound, it, mm-hmm. I felt like she sounded pretty generic, and then I actually was listening to some of her quotes, and I'm like, you sound kind of hot. Right? She I, sounded I way hotter than I was <laughs> right? I imagining in my head before listening to her. I don't know why. At first, I thought she was like, what do you see up there? But she's like, what do you see up there? Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she has that, like... She has that growl in her voice, like the gravel growl. Yeah. yeah. Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so who, who wants to tackle it? I mean, I just nailed it. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, that's what true. That is true. Quotes? It was so good that it just slipped, uh, slipped under the radar. Um, gouge him, Valor. Nice. Less sexy, but, you know, you tried. Yeah, that's her action <laughs> mode. She's in. She's all right. business. That's at that true. Time. That's true. You got your business pants on. And you <laughs> I'm gonna go the other direction and go Not your more pants. sexy than the line calls for. That's yeah. Who's there, <laughs> Garen? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he does say that a lot. Oh man, you're getting a little hot under the collar with the- <laughs> <laughs> This is like when Quinn was a like a sex operator. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Jana. Sex. No, uh, that's the old lore. <laughs> John. Actually, did they get rid of that quote or is it still in game? I think it's still in game. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, you know, update something of Jana's. <laughs> <laughs> no, come, no, John, no. Come on. Crazy. <laughs> 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 So, uh, right, who wants so to take us through the, the bio, bio today? I have notes oh, today. Oh, shit. Everybody. I know. Fuck your bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know what? I, I we do have a bingo card so I made a while ago, and I don't think that's on that shockingly. Maybe at, I'm like, almost positive it is. Oh, fuck me. All right. <laughs> I thought it was. I only have notes for the bio. Would have oh, been it on might it. it might be that because I think I used to just too. only take notes for the bio, and then I had a baby, and I'm like, you know what, y'all? <laughs> no, no, then so you'll be thankful for it. <laughs> it was before I had her. Then I got pregnant. <laughs> Quinn was a normal girl in Demacia. Truly, she and her twin brother Caleb grew up in Uindel. And uh, after a visit from Jarvan III, the siblings became obsessed with the idea of becoming knights and serving Demacia, all that fun stuff. Uh, But as they grew up, they spent more time with their mother, who was a ranger. And she taught them how to track and survive, you know, all the classic ranger stuff. So uh, one day after they were official rangers, all big and strong, Quinn and Caleb were hired to help nobles hunt a tusk boar. Um, They're not good at hunting tusk force apparently (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) because quinn and caleb had to step in and they did fight the beast off but not before caleb uh got killed and then the beast ran away so Hmm. quinn had a you know a a rough year (laughs) after that her ranger (laughs) seals were not so good a woman named lady listara bouvel yeah Mm -hmm. does that sound right yeah sounds good Uh, She visited Quinn and asked if there was anything she could do to repay her because Quinn had saved her husband's life, but Quinn had nothing. Uh, On the anniversary of her brother's death, she went to his grave and was attacked by the Tusk Four who had killed him. They take it out of his eyes so they could recognize him. She struggled with it until an eagle stepped in to help. Eagle. Eagle. The eagle got injured. Quinn helped him, and now they're besties, and that's obviously Valor. (laughs) Then the eagle flew off, and another bird came (laughs) (laughs) You'll be my stand-in for the good one. (laughs) Uh, Quinn decided she wanted to become a knight again, like when she was a child, and with Lady Lestara Bouvel's help. I think I just said a totally different name than the first time. Now you nailed. Uh, Quinn became a ranger knight for Demacia and now she travels around the world kind of preferring to work alone with Valor uh, serving Demacia from the outside and that's that's Quinn yeah it's basically what I expected I did not know she had a twin brother so I guess I assumed some kind of tragedy happened in her life (laughs) her parents are still alive which (laughs) that's nice yeah no something no Disney princess stuff here she's she's still got her folks yeah she's She's a little more D and D character, right? Yes. A little more like, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. She's um, a D and D character you make when you're like, I'm not gonna do a really tragic backstory this time. Just a partially <laughs> tragic <laughs> yeah, yeah. story. You're like my whole family's not dead, just my brother. Uh, it's yeah. how to train your dragon if Hiccup weren't inept. I I guess sure. I I think I've seen that once like, a long <laughs> ass time ago. It's a great film. But yeah, I'm not saying it's of, bad. I'm just saying I don't have the reference. God, Mark said he fucking hates How to Train Mar- Your Dragon. This folks. just get in. in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is that is slander. Okay. <laughs> Mark hates but it, and the toothless. sequels more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you might, for the record, remember you and Dale from way back in the day when we covered Poppy. Uh, <laughs> it's the town where the Slayer left their first eyewitness account of um, their appearance, which prompted oh. the creation of the statue. Okay. So at the mm-hmm. end of that story, she was off to Ewendale to try and find the Slayer. I'm curious that it would be really fun for Quinn and Poppy to have a run-in together, I think. They probably right. have. They're both chilling in Demacia, right? right? They're kind of both wandering around near Demacia, very much loners yeah. <laughs> yeah it's almost like there was another champion with a hand crossbow who probably should have been <laughs> Quinn <laughs> oh my god I didn't know that so just mm-hmm. to bring up I know that Quinn's not in Rise of the Sentinels but she fucking should have been <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that would have been great why the fuck was Vane there <laughs> Because Vane is way more popular than Quinn, is, ah. is my 100% guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vane. It's a real shame. You'll be great, too, is because, like, Quinn's all about Demacia needs heroes, and at the same time, she can't wield that hammer. Like, I would love Poppy trying to give her the hammer, and Quinn's yeah. like, oh, nope, too That slow. would be really <laughs> funny, like, if Poppy just keeps trying to give her the hammer, and finally Quinn's I, like, I you know what? With this. Fine. Let me show you what I'm going to fight like with this hammer. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> 
Oh, that's so cute. Mm. I love the idea of Way Poppy better. just desperately <laughs> trying. And Quinn does not share the rest of Demacia's hate of you the, know magic, magic and shit like no, that. No. So I mean, even it, even better pairing for Poppy. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, what could have been? What are you gonna do? What could have been right? Uh, another tidbit from this one is uh, the the Bouvels that we mentioned here. Mm. Uh, Lord um, Barrett is Sona's adopted father. Oh. Um, so good on Quinn huh. because it really changed the course of League history here, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> because he then does go on to die a few years later. Oh, really? But we'll get to that. <laughs> Wow, Caleb died for nothing. <laughs> hey, you know, got two more years. Two I think more she years. Even, yeah, she's like, thanks for giving me two more that. years with my husband. Oh my God, he I was, missed that. He was so accident prone. He was so inept. He two years to, is like. Could you imagine how insulting it would be if he died trying to hunt a tusk for? Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. I feel like Quinn yeah. just should have killed him herself at that point. Are you trying this? Like, you dumb you ass. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Uh, uh. Yeah, I, I, it's it's fine. Like you said, yeah. it's a lot of what you expect. Um, I think it's like just on the side of interesting for me. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was. It didn't feel like a Graham McNeil piece. Yeah. yeah. It like it felt like they gave Graham McNeil this bio and they were like, but don't make it sound too McNeely. <laughs> I mean, the bios, you kind of have to do that, I guess. But yeah. yeah. Well, it is interesting when you say that, because like, I looked at her old bio, and I think it's just the same stuff, but just less. It's like three paragraphs, and this is now like 800 words. So maybe they're just like, hey, who can we get to fill out the word count a little bit? (laughs) McNeil. (laughs) Graham McNeil will for sure. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Fluff up the word count. (laughs) Yeah. They, uh, although they, they made one change that I'm not a huge fan of. I guess we'll get into it when Ooh. we get into the old lore. But uh, I didn't read it super deep, close, to be honest. I was like, this all looks about the same, so I kind of skimmed it. <laughs> yeah. It was mostly the yeah, same. Yeah, Caleb, he died, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they didn't name him Caleb in the old bio. Oh. He was just unnamed brother. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. It's, it's good they give him a name, because I feel like if you want to have some kind of sympathy from your audience, to feel some kind of emotion, at the very least, name the character. Sure. Now, here's the weird thing. Mm. They didn't give him a name in the bio. Sure. Her release uh, thing, which is just a bunch of pages from her diary, they do give him a name there. So, like, they had the name mm. on launch. They just didn't put it in his bio. They just fucking left it out of the bio for some reason. I wonder if yeah. they ever thought there was a point where they, like, didn't want to clutter up bios with lots of names, something like that. So maybe, maybe. they felt like they didn't that. need his name it's like we need we, we don't have room for names what we do have room for is a three paragraph sentence on why they joined the league of legends <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you know you got to explain it yeah it's it's weird because like i feel like when i look at bios that are like recent enough that they don't have the institute of war but are still have been changed sometimes they get made a lot more verbose and sometimes they get a lot less verbose like i think pantheon <laughs> I, don't, I didn't mention it in the episode, but his he had a previous version of the bio that was way more detailed about him and um, the guy who he ended up getting killed. Um, mm. I was like, oh, I like this. I wish we had more of this. And then Quinn is kind of like, I feel like maybe it could have just been a little thinner and like we could have gotten the, <laughs> all this, but I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a big, it was fine for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's what you'd expect. It is fun to hear about a ranger. I feel like when I play D&D, I always really like rangers, even Me though too. I don't always play them. But I do They're one like of my favorite idea. archetypes, I think. Ran- yes. Rangers. Mm. Yeah, they're cool. They're very much up your alley, I guess. If you were to if you were to be a like D&D in class, IRL, IRL, you'd probably, I would probably be choose a ranger. A ranger, yeah. yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Well, I think she's neat, too, because she fits into a neat kind of spot in... Like the Demacian hierarchy, like there's not a lot of them that tool around out in the wilds. So it's kind of, she's kind of unique in that way too. Yeah, it, it get, definitely gives her the outsider perspective of like how Demacia is crumbling a little bit right now with their beliefs and their anti magic and whatnot. It was nice to get her perspective on that as somebody who is very loyal to Demacia but is critical of what they're currently doing. 
which yeah. I like. Because I feel like even Garen is like, well, well I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jorvan is, <laughs> that's what he said. It took him a lot. <laughs> they, t- right. they told me to do the thing, so I did the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took and him you, a lot. It was even, he was even very reluctant to let his own sister go. And yeah, yeah. whereas I don't think Quinn would have uh, quite had that dilemma. Like, say, if Kate Loper were a mage, she would have been like, oh, fucking, let's get you out of here. <laughs> yeah. Which we yeah. see in yeah. her short story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this random well, ass you know, person's a mage, like- but go on <laughs> yeah well it makes me want to see her interact with garen and her to like s- like throw that back at him mm-hmm. like you why was it even a question for you right yeah. if i could have caleb back in a second i would send him anywhere just to know he was out there you know what i mm-hmm. mean yeah like, that would be a lot of fun oh that would be good i do like the idea of playing into um you know her tragedy a little bit because we do get a paragraph explaining how in pain she was. I mean, again, it's a bio. I get they can't like linger on her mourning, but losing a twin, like uh, that's uh, the hardest of the siblings to lose. Yeah, I mean that's rough. And uh, I mean a twin Rank that you're. Them. What's the easiest sibling to lose? <sighs> a sibling you don't like. A yeah, everyone's, everyone's got one. <laughs> you, you only got just children kidding, out there. family. I don't have yeah. one. I love you all. <laughs> Uh, Mark, yeah. I think you only have one sibling. Do you just? Is she- <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm s- sorry, but that's how it. You know, she's only one, so that's the one who's got. That's the way the know. sibling crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I imagine it's uh, still, even years later, very difficult to yeah keep going and to be a knight. You know the way her brother wanted. And we don't really, uh, we don't really get that very much. So, yeah. yeah, I would like to see more of that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And that's something I like about her old, some of her old lore stuff, like some of the release stuff they did with her. Is there is a page where she's writing to Caleb, you know, and it's oh, like, oh, yeah. it's a little insight into it. And I, mm-hmm. I wish there's like an, a lot of opportunity in the long story where maybe she could have been reflecting on some of that, and it, it doesn't really happen. I feel like it's kind of a, a missed opportunity. Yeah, especially um, because they pass right by. The area where like a lot of shit went down. If yeah, I remember correctly. yeah. And the longer yeah. story, they kind of she's like she's familiar with this area and doesn't like it, and that's kind of all <laughs> they really say. Uh, she yeah. also refers to Valor as her little brother at some point, which I don't know. They don't really delve into whether or not this is a healthy. Atta- I mean, obviously, she and Valor have a close, real bond as you can with an animal, but. Is she in some ways projecting a little bit her pain <laughs> into this relationship? It's I hard because she- I think I think Riot has flirted internally with the idea that maybe Valor is like Caleb kind of reincarnated almost. I wondered if they were gonna play with that. When when, you know, Valor came about, I wondered if, you know, there was gonna be hints that this was Caleb. Which I mean it's Runeterra. Someone didn't want to <laughs> die. <laughs> <laughs> He could turn into an eagle. (laughs) I'm a bird. Fuck you. Yeah, Yeah, I think like the the farthest they've committed to that is I feel like saying that like uh, Quinn sees a lot of Caleb's personality Mm. in Valor. I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. All right. I want to hop into the the first short story the sure I have notes on that too so actually before we do that I'm gonna oh. do a quick one that's not linked but is timeline wise technically the next one. Oh. oh okay the yeah I know what you're talking about uh, so this one is Fragile Legacies by Dana Lurie Shaw um, and this one is basically at the funeral for Lord Barrett okay. he has died um, <laughs> he has died he has died <laughs> uh, so they're at the funeral and I fucking loved this. So remember, remember when the bio, when it said uh, that eventually Quinn did decide to take up, uh, I forget her name, Lestara, is that her name? Something like that. Yeah, Lestara, that's right. yeah. When she finally decided to take Lestara up on her offer for a favor. Guess when she asks for the favor? No! <laughs> <laughs> At her husband's funeral, y'all! Quinn, uh, girl! <laughs> You know what? She's a country bumpkin. She doesn't understand. Like, <laughs> So she shows up to the funeral. Uh, Lestara thanks her for giving her two more good years. That's, uh, that's when Quinn asked for the favor. Um, and so 
uh, Lestar is actually kind of looking for a distraction. So she's like, yeah, I'll do and Quinn's kind of uncomfortable asking, but she does it and she's like, you don't have to do it now. She's like, no, I, I would like to. So mm. she goes up to uh, Tiana to ask. Um, and uh, for some background here, Tiana was supposed to be leading the vanguard that was protecting uh, Lord Barrett, but she retired so that she could become Grand Marshal instead. Um, and in her absence, the vanguard failed to protect Barrett and he died. So there's a bit of drama here. Tiana, so, uh, <laughs> I'm still so suspicious of this lady. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay, so she goes up and asks Tiana for the You know the what? Favor. Tiana sounds like Kiana. <gasps> <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and Kiana's evil, so. <laughs> what are you applying? Uh, <laughs> they're both LeBlanc. It's as clear as day. There it is. Um, so yeah, she goes up to Tiana, and Tiana's like, you know, you serve people so often. Why don't you take a little break, give people the opportunity to serve you instead of, you know, asking for uh, favors for other people today. And she's like, oh, sweet. Well, if you're offering to serve me today, I'd really love if you could do the favor that I just asked you to do, <laughs> especially because Quinn actually protected Lord Barrett. Oh, <laughs> and, uh Good for her. <laughs> and Tiana got a little pissy. Oh, <laughs> mm, uh, but she does. Uh, she does end up getting that knighthood. Um, yeah. <laughs> interesting. She she does try to put it off too. She's like, oh well, I'm going, you know, I'm going uh, off on expedition <laughs> soon. Maybe when we come back, she's like, oh, when are you leaving on expedition? Oh, in three days. Oh, I guess we'll talk in the next two days then, won't we? <laughs> she, she's very. Yeah. She's very in it. <laughs> I want that. I'm liking Mustara. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can I get that? those big ass balls she's dragging around <laughs> because i just gotta say i'm so bad at confrontation i would have been like oh, yeah sure okay <laughs> sure tiana your, pauld your pauldrons are very big <laughs> yeah. right she's like looming over her wide as a mac truck with those pauldrons i, I didn't even like my husband <laughs> it's fine probably Clumsy he like a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he sounded very nice. <laughs> he sounded lovely. <laughs> yeah, he sounded like a great guy. <laughs> anyway. But anyway, yeah, timeline-wise, that's the next one. And then we get mm -hmm. on to the one that's actually linked on the page. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Sorry. This is called Rules of Survival. John has it credited for Graham McNeil. I assume he wrote it. <laughs> that's not credited on the Riot Universe page. <laughs> This one is a really quick action piece. I mean, it's her color story. Quinn has tracked a bunch of Noxians close to the Damasian border, a little too close for comfort. She waits for them to get a bit tipsy and then goes in. She gives them a chance to take what they've stolen or to give back what they've stolen, rather. Uh, but they, of course, attack her. So she and Valor slaughter them all. Literally, they just <laughs> murder all of them. And then throughout the story, there are little like lines about rules of survival that are pretty basic, like rule three, stay silent just things like that <laughs> rule four stay alive <laughs> kind of <laughs> survive <laughs> <laughs> honestly it could have just been summarized by rule one don't die and then, yes. yeah but that's kind of it i didn't i didn't yeah. really get anything else from this yeah rules gave me real zombie land vibes yes oh, but sure. not I funny yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zombie land was funny and it's very lucky like that they were numbered in such a way that they just they, she corresponded got to, they with corresponded her. to the shit that she needed That's to do. True, she was never like it was never actually like Zombie Land where he was like, "Hey, rule this is 32. rule twenty-seven. Hey, this yeah. is rule four. You know, yeah. Rule one: She's wait for him to get up. drunk. Rule two: <laughs> wait for nighttime. Rule three: are they Noxian? It's a, <laughs> it's it's like a little flow chart. Right. That's what it was. <laughs> I did like the one where so there's one of the Noxians who's a little better. Mm. And it's kind of like on alert. And then one of the other Noxians is like, hey, come on, have a drink. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll have a drink. And then the immediate response is like, oh, rule four, five. Don't <laughs> let stupid people drag you down to their level or something like that. Yeah. I liked that one. I like to think that she was making them up as she went along with just this mission. Right. Like, this is how yeah, she probably. entertains herself, you know, a little bit. She's probably writing them down in her journal. Make journal of this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Gee, what a fucking nerd, huh? <laughs> journal. <laughs> Who's going to read it, Valor? 
<laughs> I don't know. Bird. I just ripped on her for journaling. I don't know what that was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn, we judge for hard. journaling here. This is, this <laughs> Except is a, the journal. This is a journal safe zone. <laughs> That's. Uh, <laughs> Now I want to get a journal and write journal justice on. It. I do so, have like eight okay. journals. I don't know. Anyway, right, you just got to write journal justice. Just got to write journal justice on one of them. I was thinking like, after the bio, like what's going to make this a Graham McNeil story? Mm. And then I read this line: uh, "Hooked claws tore the face from one Noxian, and the eagle's slashing beak clove." <laughs> clove the skull of the soldier next to him. The third Noxian managed to raise his weapon, but Valor sank his claws into his shoulder and bore him to the ground. The eagle's beak slashed down, and the man's struggles ceased instantly. And I was like, yeah, okay, now this is a Graham McNeil <laughs> piece. <laughs> man, Valor is, was, I was really surprised at how violent Valor, yeah, he takes, he takes his face off. Not yeah. like, oh, he scratches his face, but it is removed. Straight up fucking Dwight Schrute that shit, <laughs> wore it. <laughs> not, not Hannibal Lecter. Not Hannibal Lecter, which is what he's mocking. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Dwight version. <laughs> fucking millennial. Oh, my God. That's how we do. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <sighs> Uh, I ended up liking this one, I think, just because it was very short, but very effective. And I liked that it was, like, in Quinn's head the whole time. So I got a good sense of, like, how she operates and kind of a little bit of how she is, like, in her moment-to-moment, I guess. Yeah. I kind of like that. I, think I liked it. I think my main problem with this story is that uh, since we're viewing it through Quinn's head, like, in her head... um, and we're also viewing the shield of remembrance in Quinn's head. It seems like two very different Quins. Yeah. Um, I kind of agree. Like, and I like this Quinn better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you like assassin uh, Quinn? I like the other Quinn. So I thought it was pretty ballsy because she went in and she was like, "I should take them silently," but like, you know, they're they're up here in Damasia. Fuck them. I'm not taking them quietly. And then she like just goes in guns ablaze and in a fight that like she she knew that she some shouldn't. of them had been drinking. Yeah. She knew that she shouldn't take them on like this, but she did anyway. And what was at risk here? The thing they had stolen, they say at the end, was like Damasian marching orders. That could have been fucking disastrous if she failed <laughs> to That's get true. that shit back. And, and I feel like there were no repercussions for her going in like this. Whereas in the the next story, like she she really does hesitate to take on a whole group of people by herself. I don't I don't think she should have won this fight. I know that Quinn is very good, but. Noxian soldiers are also very good, and there's five of them. Six. Six of them. Because um, this one was a 6v1, and she was like, easy this is 6v2, peasy. 6v2, I guess, and maybe Valor can count for two or three people. <laughs> and then in the next story, it is just five, and she's like, well, I'm not just going to go in 5v1. That would be fucking crazy. Yeah. I think yeah. she even says like 5v2, like two versus five is still not the best right like, situation yes. even though the other one's also a trained ranger I on think, his way yeah. i think would have made this what would have made this work for me is if quinn was really pissed off for some reason like they had done something in particular that is making her act irrationally and maybe she just gets really lucky in this fight they had taken down a horn beast with no problem <laughs> <laughs> earlier in the day <laughs> <laughs> it's just I don't know something to to kind of uh, connect this Quinn with the the other one that we get who's a little bit more level headed and yeah but this yeah. is fun because she just kind of goes in and annihilates a bunch of people and you're like oh shit you're like an amazing soldier but it doesn't it doesn't match up with the other Quins that we're yeah. getting and this I Quinn's, think he could yeah yeah this Quinn's thinking like a League of Legends champion and the other Quinn is thinking like a ranger yeah this is how I play League but then I lose the fight <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it spends a lot of time setting up. Here's all the ways. Like the point of all those rules being hammered in is like here's all the ways that they are not prepared. Right? They're drunk. Yeah. Their their defenses are down. They have they don't have night sight because she is makes a specific point to like avoid looking in any light so she can see them and they can't see her. Like I it read to me like she spent a lot of time preparing and des- deciding to do something that even if it was rash. Um, was still maybe in more of her favor than the scenario in the the second story. And I think 
more 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 than that even it's just that i find it more entertaining and interesting and i don't yeah. really find i don't really find quinn in that thir- that long story to be terribly interesting <laughs> which is kind of where i'm like that's my issue with it did did Graham McNeil write the Katarina story where she was going over all those rules in her head? <laughs> to I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me wonder. It's just into this idea of rules. <laughs> oh, fucking rules, man. Rules, <laughs> rules are important. <laughs> yeah, I could see that, Mark. That uh, you know, I, I would say their defenses are down. They are drinking a little bit, but. I don't know. There's still six Noxian soldiers. I just... <laughs> they they try to, in her stories, time after time, I think they try to make her way more, um, uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes than her gameplay would. <laughs> That's true. Mm, yeah, I, I actually that. was thinking that, and then I was thinking, I like how it's done so much better than how it's done in a lot of, like, Sherlock Holmes, like, adaptations <laughs> that exist. It's more subtle and less, like dumb i don't know more realistic I'm, i guess more realistic <laughs> they're like, yes they're, they're 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 not leaps in logic that she's taking they're like all very they're observations yes they're that, observations that most people would not realize and they're not trying to say that she's one in a bajillion for recognizing these things but she is you know unique for recognizing weaknesses that other people wouldn't and yeah. they make sense yeah, yeah like they're things a that realistic like, competence Yes. yes. Anyone could see if they were paying attention and knew what to look for, um, but she just pays more attention and knows yeah. what to look for than most people. And not like, oh, they misses the car keys, so they must be a drunk. <laughs> or whatever they try to say. <laughs> you know. Some of us just don't have great hand eye coordination, okay? <laughs> I am just an idiot. Okay? Let's make I'm that just clear. a dumbass, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Although I did have a moment like that in the in the next story, oh, did you? Well, one of her deductions, I was like, uh, "Excuse me, <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> now I can't wait to hear it." Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, well, that takes us to the next one, I guess. Yes. Shields of Remembrance by Anthony Reynolds Lenny. <sighs> so my notes were super sparse on this, um, so just let it, me know if I miss yeah. anything super it's, significant. It's one of those stories that's long, but it can be summarized very quickly. It's a pretty basic <laughs> idea. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Quinn is tooling around in like the, you know the outer wilds of Demacia, and she's got orders to go. Um, this is like she, she, it definitely makes uh, what am I trying to say? Like calls to attention. Like the major rebellion is definitely happening. And that's an issue that she is actively dealing with. Like, that's what she, her current assignment is. But she's recently been told, hey, you got to go help Garen on a diplomatic thing. Um, I wonder what that could be. And oh. uh, <laughs> she's moving through the wilds and she spots smoke or smells it, I think, actually smells smoke and goes to investigate, finds a cabin that is burnt out, signs of like a struggle, um, and runs into another ranger, um, a guy called Dallin. Is that how he said it? I think right? so. Dallin? Yeah, that's how I said it in my head. <laughs> yeah. Dallin. Um, and they're kind of talking back and forth about, oh, there was a, a widow and her child that lived here. And, you know, the, the locals say that, you know, she's been gone. You know, she's been, like, taken or she's gone. And, and we're kind of following the tracks of what we assume are the raiders who have kind of taken her. Um, so they kind of follow the tracks. They find the raiders. Uh, they're, the raiders are moving east. And they're trying to get across the Demacian border. And Quinn and Dallin... Um, kind of get up to them, I guess you would say. Uh, Quinn has essentially an altercation with the the raiders. Um, they kind of start fighting, and um, the whole thing kind of stops mid fight when it kind of comes out that the woman who's been taken, her name is Asta, Asta, whatever, um, Asta, uh, kind of says, "Hey, you know, they're not they're not taking me. I'm this guy. They're li- the leader of the raiders is my brother." And and so we kind of get the whole. Scenario, which is that uh, Asta's mother has some magic, and she's worried that her daughter might end up having some magic, and so wants to get them, her and her daughter, out of Demacia. And she's actually from the Freljord, and that's uh, who's coming to come get her. So they're they're not like kidnapping her; they're just helping her get back out of Demacia. And uh, it kind of comes to a head when Quinn and Dolan. Dolan is like, well. All our borders are closed right now. We're in a state of emergency. We can't let them out. And Quinn kind of orders him to let them go. And and then they, they let him go. And and then they they part ways, still amicable, 
right? They, yeah. Like, even though they had a little disagreement. And then yeah, Quinn he, goes off to do Garen for a shield. He jokes <laughs> about uh, her pulling rank with him and, and all that. Quinn does rationalize it in her head why it's better for Demacia to let them go. She's like, if we, I mean, even if we survive this confrontation and we kill them all and we take her back, we're going to piss off this Freljord, Freljordian <laughs> tribe of people <laughs> and now they're going to come for us, you know? Yeah. That's she's not like good the for Demacia. Of, like, one of the chieftains yes. there. So, yeah, like, yeah. the thing is, like, you know, they they win this fight and mm-hmm. then you have some some Freljordian royal pissed off at them or they lose the yeah. fight and Demasi loses their two best rangers and there aren't a lot of rangers <laughs> they make a point to say that Quinn has trained all of the rangers that exist the only ones that exist are ones that she's trained and they've recently lost a few in these fights this is right after Silas has killed Jarvan the third so that's kind of like where mm-hmm. Demasi is at right now everything's a little bit wild and Asta's husband died defending j3 which they also talk about so she yeah. i mean she was loyal to demacia to a point but she's also not from there and she's like right. i kind of just want to fucking go home now because they might take my daughter from me yeah. and yeah like these she sees the people. writing on the wall and her neighbors have yeah. always like they've, they've always, always been very suspicious of her yeah. anyway because so, of like, her like outsider customs yeah. and everything with heightened paranoia like yeah let's get the fuck out <laughs> yeah 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 i uh I, I I don't know. This one didn't really do anything for me. <laughs> uh, it, there's a lot of like her and Dallin talking, and I don't find them to be terribly compelling in their interactions, and I don't find them traveling to be terribly like it doesn't paint a super vivid picture of like the Damasian like hinterlands or, or wilds, which I would kind of hope that it might. You know, it made me think of that that Kidden story where he is speeding out across Ionia, and there's also kind <laughs> of a twist at the end. And I like that for two reasons because I thought the twist was interesting, and it was like, oh, it's a really nice boots on the ground view of Ionia. And with this, I was like, it's not really like showing me a lot of Demacia in an inter- in an interesting way. And I saw the, I guess this might be an individual thing, but I saw the twist coming like way, oh, yeah, way yeah, yeah. early, yeah. right? <laughs> like, there's no way this is what it appears to be, and it's certain gonna, certainly going to be the case that they're not. Uh, that the woman's not there under duress, and I think what made it frustrating is that. Like you said, there's a dis- there's a disparity between this and that other short story because in the other short story, Quinn and Valor fuck motherfuckers up really quickly. And here, it's like the moment Quinn is knocking people out and tying them up, I'm like, oh, God, she's not going to kill anyone. They're not going to be bad guys. <laughs> They're going to be friends at the end of this. And it's like, press the conflict a little harder, right? Have her or Dallin, maybe even better, kill one of these guys. And it's like, what do you do in the wake of that? Um you know, or have Dallin stand his ground a little more, and like, what happens when she has to like come into conflict with this ranger guy who she respects and trusts, right? Like, punish the characters a little more, almost is what I feel about it. I would have liked the Dallin conflict for sure. I think like they had so the the thing about the twist too is like they they not only like teased it out, but they got like. Quinn herself knew that something was up. Like, when she was doing her investigation of the cabin and everything, like, mm. when they left, essentially there were, like, two sets of footprints. One was the one that clearly came to get her. And the and one another, set is when and another, he was carrying. <laughs> <laughs> You see where the footprints disappear? <laughs> that's where Quinn. Was, that's where Valor was carrying you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, but yeah, so there was a second set of footprints that set fire to the house that did not seem to be. They didn't know why there was a second set. Quinn or Quinn felt like something was off that she couldn't quite put her finger on. She didn't know what it was, but something seemed weird. We later find out that that's just the townsfolk. They we just mentioned tried they to were paranoid. Stuff. They went in and saw what they thought were runes, and they were like, well, fuck this house, and just <laughs> set it on fire. Um, but, uh, yeah, I I liked this one a lot better than the other one. I I agree. I don't think it gave us a lay of the land like the Kennan story gave, but I, I thought it gave us a good... It's one of the few stories, I feel like, where we get the idea that um, not all the Damasians are... Uh, down with all this anti-mage rhetoric. Yeah. Because the only real example we had had before that was Lux, who, I mean, obviously, she's a mage. I don't think we'd really gotten a, ma- a non-mage's perspective on, um, oh, maybe Demacia's 
overstepping shit a lot right now. Yeah. <laughs> even she's... even mm-hmm. in the beginning when Quinn gets the orders that uh she's going to have to um uh you know uh, what's it called uh escort Garen it seems very clear that she's about as done with Garen shit as we are. <laughs> she's like, literally, anything is a better use of my time than escorting Garen. Why the fuck am mm. I? Give, give this to Genevieve Elmhart, <laughs> the Legends of Runeterra card. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, she's six mana, okay? We can't have any fucking... What I would maybe like to see then, because I, I agree, I do like seeing, in particular, if someone who's a very high rank and who loves Demacia, seeing them being like, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see a little bit more dilemma with her then. Maybe her loyalty to, to Demacia is going to be a little shaken here. Or maybe Demacia's loyalty to her will be a little bit shaken here, where... They're like, well, hang on. Are you sympathizing with mages now just because she's not willing to murder or imprison them all? Uh, yeah, I think playing into that more would make it more interesting, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. I think like you said, Mark, like that confrontation with Dallin at the end, I feel like could have could have been that moment where if it had gone a little bit further, <clears throat> maybe, yeah. he, maybe he had been like, all right, we're breaking the law, but like, I've got to report this. Yeah, like, I was going to say, mm-hmm. maybe maybe he's now going to spread the word. He kind of hints that he's going to spread the word that Quinn is sympathizing with mages. Something like that. Unfortunately, he's also a Legends of Rune Terra card. So, <laughs> so they could do I that. Think he's, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, yeah. I kind of wish he wasn't. Like, it, it's it's like, oh, it's neat to see uh, the card is the green Fang Warden. It'd be nice to see, it's nice to see them show up, but I prefer it being someone who can be like that. Because I, I think that would be a really fun thing to do because I think... In this, remember we've always talked about like, ooh, Demasi kind of breaks into like three different sort of factions. Yeah. Like, I think Quinn as a part of that sort of new Demacia with Lux and Garen makes total sense. Yes. You, they're they're a bunch of displaced like like rugged Garen living out in the wilds, and Quinn's having to show him how to do it, and they're having these sort of back and forth conversations. Um. Mm. Oh, that'd I'd be love great. That. Yeah. 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 And, and Chicago Ranger Knights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can even like, <laughs> I, I kind of bring that 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 short story Quinn, that violent Quinn, into the mix as well. There, where she's kind mm. of showing. I mean, not that Garen isn't willing to be violent. He surely fights into wars, but I, I don't know. I, I, he also did just behead a dude in yeah, that one story. That's fair. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they'll just slaughter people together. They'll, they'll all rip off a face. That's three. Yeah. <laughs> you get a face, and you get a face. And- <laughs> Or you lose a face. I don't know. <laughs> Look at what Val- you think you've a head, guys. Look at what Valor can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because that's something that they, they that she kind of says at the end, and I do like I like that idea for her character that she is she's someone who works in the gray areas, right? Where Demasi is all about black and white. So yes. she got a cool, unique perspective, and it it would be tons of fun to rub that up against Garen. Because when Garen did, beheaded that guy, it was because the law said to, and he was like. Yeah, no fucking questions, right? He didn't hesitate. Um, so it's nice to put him in a position where it's like, hey, man, shit's just, you need nuance, and it's like, it's complicated. Yeah. It's not simple, you know? Something being the law doesn't make it right, and I mean, surely we all kind of know that. And <laughs> Garen, you still blockhead. figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, for the record, yeah. the investigation piece that stuck out hey. when she was in the house, and she said, uh, those curtains had been drawn shut, Quinn noted, and the surviving shutters pulled closed. That means the fire had started after dark. Like, nice try, Sherlock, but some of us just like to live in the fucking dark. Oh, wow. And there's nothing wrong with no, that. No, uh, they don't have lamps, John. She was doing a 12-hour gaming sesh, and she just needed to... <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing that stuck out to me, this was such a stupid thing to focus on, I think they mentioned that Asta's child is like two or something like that she was a little bit older so she's a toddler yeah she was a toddler and then at some point she was crying and then they called her an infant they referred to her as an infant and i'm like well she a fucking toddler is she an infant <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> let's get it fucking straight here okay Hang on. how many infant? weeks old is this child <laughs> be the weeks <laughs> <laughs> i thought okay there is a moment where quinn ults and valor is flying mm. around carrying her um i don't know i was like it's really hard not to go into like a Monty Python space of like, you know, like, can a two ounce bird really carry a one pound <laughs> <like> a Quinn? <laughs> okay. 
I do they ever mention why he doesn't do that more? Because they're running for so long trying to catch this group, and this whole time the Eagles could have brought them to Mordor. You know, like, this whole time, the whole time, Valor could have brought her. They do like. I feel like they do mention a bit that, that it's when, like a, he, when he, he did pick window. it up, it was a bit. Of, it was a bit of a struggle, and okay. then when he did let her down again, it was like, oh, here we go. And then he yeah. okay, that makes sense. I was wondering. Okay. I couldn't remember. Uh, Valor to me. Oh fuck. Okay, hold on. Shit. Valor was just falling with style the whole time. <laughs> Your armor's yeah. heavier than you think, bitch. Uh, bitch, you need to lay off the donuts. Why do you carry around Poppy's it. hammer? <laughs> My back. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she also has a line in here where she's on the whole, the Mossians are good, honorable people. <laughs> But fear and distrust were spreading like a plague and bringing out the worst in them. And I don't know about that, because I've met a lot of shitty ones so far. <laughs> <laughs> like 90% of the Demacians were kind of D-holes. <laughs> what about, uh, what about, um, what about, <laughs> what about, uh, what about, I'll, what about, I'll find one, I'll find uh, one. <laughs> Lux. Also, can I just say I fucking love Egrid shooting his shot here. Oh, oh my yeah. god, he was so funny when like they, th- <laughs> when the you know Quinn and the Rangers realize they're not going to fight anymore. What was his name? Egrid. Egrid. He was like, ah, you like to fight too? Let's go have many babies. Right. <laughs> He's like, you're fast and strong, and you stitch up wounds real good. You should come back with me and we'll get married. <laughs> <laughs> and then she ignored him, so he's like, one more time. <laughs> just gonna try yeah, just one later more time. on, he's like, I gotta. <laughs> she might not have heard me. Right. Yeah. You know, just it, this club is super loud, and this is like, <laughs> I said we should get married. Married, <laughs> babies. Do you want my babies? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, Ranger yeah, Knight at the Roxbury? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. I will laugh at that, Mark. It was Not funny. Not only am I laughing at that, that's going on TikTok, Mark. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, so we got one more. And we all we all reread all of Garen for <laughs> Shields for this, right? No. I know. Oh. Well, oh, well, I mean, you know, I guess if you, I if you don't that care about we the were, lore. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mark, did you read all of If you don't give a shit again? about the podcast, no. then fine. <laughs> John, I'm pretty sure you also didn't read all Absolutely of it. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, but no. I can take you through Quinn's part of it. We're, I, it sounds like we're ripping on it. It's good. It's a good novella. No, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't reread it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah I'm not rereading it. Every every time a character in it shows up, no, I mean this would be the, this would probably be the only other time <laughs> until Tiana hey, uh, gets made into a character. Ooh, yeah. No, we. She I can't. already reread it for LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Shield of Remembrance ends with her sprinting to make her rendezvous with Garen in this story for like three days. Th- yeah, when she finally meets up with Garen, uh, they she comes aboard their ship. She does not help Roe like everyone else does, um, which leads to some disapproving comments by Eben Hess. Uh, instead, she just kind of stretches and goes to sleep on the deck because, you know, she ran for fucking three days. <laughs> <laughs> and then flyers, <laughs> Valor's flying around uh, somewhere above the ship. Uh, then when they end up camping, uh, instead of sleeping in their like protected camp with the rest of the vanguard, she spends the night scouting. Uh, and in the morning, she returns, and she and Garen discuss their path forward, Uh, She claims they can't sail forward much more because the river's uh, lower than usual, so they should land on the Grey Claws, continue to climb the ravine between Rizhen Land and Nockmerch by foot. Uh, Garen and the other dumbass shield surgeons consider other options, but then in the end, they're like... That was kind of drunk John adding dumbass, because that's not in his notes. Well, they're dumbasses. Mm. (laughs) So they hired this ranger, right? to help them scout and then she was like here's what you should do and they're like uh we'll look into our own options thank you very much and then in the end they're like okay yours was the good option we'll do that <laughs> like yeah no shit sherlock that's why you hired sherlock um she's sherlock yeah we got it situation. oh okay yeah, yeah yeah 
So uh, outside of the Alderberg, where Garen and the rest of the Vanguard are when they get to their destination, uh, Quinn finds tracks and follows them and realizes, oh shit, there's a Noxian war camp here. Uh, she's almost spotted, well, she is spotted, uh, but then murders the dude. <laughs> um, and then tries to run away. She has to fight her way through a bunch of sentries. And then she realizes that with like a force this big, the lord of the castle that Garen's in, like, yeah, they fucking knew they were here. Like, they didn't sneak up on him. So she's starting to sense foul play. Um, meanwhile, the bird in... foul? Sorry. <laughs> 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 meanwhile, <laughs> uh, inside, Garen is getting also suspicious of his great uncle, who's acting very un-great uncle um, and then Quinn runs in and is all like, uh, we've gone, done, been had, folks. Uh, they lying. And a fight breaks out. Uh, the Vanguard's trapped, and Garen gives Quinn the okay to try and take out a tower that could be used to free them. Essentially, there's like a bunch of portcullises that are kind of closed, and they're stuck between two of them. So they're like, hey, Quinn, go take out that tower, try and raise the portcullis, and if things get dicey... Get the fuck out of here, because someone needs to tell Demacia what happened here. Um, lo and behold, things get dicey. <laughs> uh, she takes out most of the tower, but one soldier who she stabbed, but didn't stab good enough, uh, manages to injure Valor and shoot her in the chest with a, a crossbow bolt. Not like her wimpy crossbow bolts either. Wow. A legit crossbow bolt. Two-hander. <laughs> Two-hander. Uh, Valor does manage to fly away, though. So they kind of see Valor fly away, um, but couldn't get the gate up. Um, so then, uh, you know, the whole big fight happens with Garen and all that shit. Quinn's not involved in that. But then just as the Demacians are getting overwhelmed by these superior numbers of Noxians, Valor returns with reinforcements. Um, so they easily rout the enemy and all is good. And then Quinn eventually recovers and goes back to the woods where she's more comfortable. Mm. The end. Good job, Valor. You did, Literally Valor. Literally save the day. <laughs> you did. Valor, unsung hero. I want to see that scene where Valor be... shows up, and it's like Lassie. It's like, oh, what's yeah. that boy? <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did Valor Garen's get a bunch well? of soldiers <laughs> to follow him? Could you I imagine think put just a note like on swatting him? him? Like, what the fuck? Get away from me. <laughs> yeah, she puts this a part. lot of notes in Valor. He just, got her, he just got her journal. Right in there. He, he just vomits up her journal. <laughs> <laughs> That's where she keeps I guess it's diaries. better than the alternative. That this one's just a out. shopping list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the fanfic between her and Garen. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember liking her a lot in this, though. Um, and I would like to reread it at some point um, now that we've gone through her lore. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is a good combination, too, of the two. St- it's like mm. a good combination of the versions of her we get in the two stories because she has obviously like she's a good <laughs> ranger and good at sleuthing like she was in the second story. But also she's up against Noxians. So there's murder that's going to be happening. <laughs> so so we get to see that that brutal side, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's um it's a nice, nice balance. I I, I agree. All right. And those are the, those are the Quinn stories. Now, uh, she has yeah. a bit of old lore here. Uh, I mentioned the bio. The bio is mostly the same, just more generic. Um, but the one big difference is instead of the, well, instead of the whole bit about the hunting party, she and her unnamed brother uh, go on an <laughs> adventure and tragedy strikes. Um, and instead of being rescued by Valor and nursing him back to health, she just finds Valor already injured. <laughs> And oh, just nurses okay. him back to health. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. no big epic. Uh, and then also, th- this is a big difference that I wasn't a huge fan of. Instead of, or a big difference that where I like, I kind of like the old shit better. Um, mm. Instead of just being vouched for by nobility in Demacia, um, they, they're they like, no, we don't know who you are. So she has to prove herself by tracking down a Noxian assassin who had evaded the rest of the Demacian guard. Um, and like prove that like, hey, I'm better than kind of all you guys. So like, let me in now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did think it was uh, at some point they're like, okay, she's you know becomes a night ranger, ranger knight. Um, 
And then they kind of mentioned like, she doesn't like to pull rank and stuff like that. And I'm like, rank? She just got here. What rank does she have? <laughs> Why does she have a rank? <laughs> She's like one of the only ranger knights. Like, yeah. because there's a lot of rangers, um, but to be a ranger knight, you need to have the nobility vouch for you, which mm. is fucking weird. That's and the monster. And it seems like you either have noble friends or you like the outdoors. Not both. <laughs> so she's the only one. That... <laughs> yeah, I like that version better too. Now that you're saying it, you know, um, you know what else is neat about that is that ties into her release materials, right? Where you get like yeah. the almost like a mixed media type thing showing her 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 investigation or whatever. Um, yeah, it was very cool. Yeah, uh, and that one was called Demacia Needs Heroes, and it's just a bunch of excerpts from her journal. Um, we get to see her. We get to see her superior tracking intellect when she realizes there's essentially like a copycat killer posing as Talon, either posing oh. as Talon or like just people notice murders and they're like, "Oh, must be Talon." <laughs> so she's like looking at all the mo and she's like, "No, this is all wrong. Talon wouldn't do this. This is sloppy. This isn't what he would do." Um, so she goes to Jarvan the Fourth and Garen and is like, "Guys, you gotta believe me. This ain't Talon." And Garen's like, you know, fucking suck a brick. I'm going to go out and investigate anyway. Um, and Jarvin's like, no, oh, trust your gut. I believe in you. And so I, she writes in her, her journal too, like, uh, Garen, kind of, a, kind of a stickler. Don't like him much. Valor does not respect him. <laughs> uh, Jarvin, different than I expected. Cool. <laughs> um, but she, so, yeah, she, uh, she goes out um, and uh yeah her hunt brings her back to where she lost caleb um and you know that's where she has the whole like page long letter to caleb like hey caleb <laughs> Miss here's you, how man. things are going <laughs> <laughs> sorry about uh, getting like you? eviscerated <laughs> <laughs> uh, bye-bye <laughs> um and th- we found out this is the actually this is the assassin from her bio that she was tracking that got her acknowledged in the first place. Um, mm. So she does eventually bring him to justice and earns a spot in the Rangers. And then the last page of her diary is a self portrait, which is very good. It turns out that Quinn is quite the artist. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Almost like a like a naturist, like going around yeah. sketching, drawing plants like, and shit. Yeah, yeah, she, she, she is, is good though. though. Yeah. yeah, she is. She's got talent. She's got Garen, yeah, yeah. She's got talent. Talent. Do you think they? <laughs> do you think they did the talent thing because like birds have talons and so like they're na- like obviously they're natural like. <laughs> they be they're friends. Natural I don't enemies. Know. Oh, friends. Or enemies. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Frenemies. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, now I'm shipping Quinn and Talon just for that. <laughs> uh the <laughs> the next piece of lore here is called journey into the freljord um this is where quinn is sent into the freljord to assess the potential threat as barbarian tribes have always raided demacia uh but now it looks like people are actually like uniting under ash um and demacia is a little bit worried about what that means for them so they send quinn to investigate um so she starts at ash's camp and is surprised at how warm and welcoming they are even Valor likes Ash, not like that shithole Garen. Uh, so she uh, she hears whispers when she's in the camp of another potential leader, though. So she leaves to scout out Sejuani's camp. Um, after scouting a bit, she realizes that Sejuani is much more of a raider. Um, she destroys villages and pillages them, um, but she's also recruiting a lot. And she's even recruiting villages previously loyal to Ash. Um, and that's kind of when she realizes that, like, uh, Sedge, one, first of all, is not the starving, ill-equipped warband that the people in Ash's camp described her as, and also that uh, Ash does not really have the reach to protect her own tribes that are this far out, um, which could be a real big problem to Ash and Demacia. Um, and as she keeps scouting, she learns of an ice switch and a new troll king who's been organizing Ooh. the previously chaotic trolls and organizing raids. Who could they be? Who could it be? Uh, 
So she stumbles across one of these raids, but she can't really save anyone. Um, but do, she does notice that the village was also loyal to Ash, which is kind of the second Ash loyal village she's seen get, actually third, I think, that she's seen get destroyed in her time here. Um, finally, she arrives at the Frost Guard, who are outwardly supportive of Ash. Um, Val immediately distrusts Lysandra, but Quinn assumes it's just because Lysandra reminds uh, Valor of Demacia nobility, who suck. Um, so after questioning Lysandra about a lot of things, Quinn realizes she's being very dismissive, not fully answering any questions, and she's getting a little bit suspicious of Lysandra. Um, so nighttime comes, and she decides to sneak around and take a look. And she realizes that every building in town has like a glowing watching eye on it. And she also notices a bunch of members of the Frost Guard praying to this weird, like, statue and doing, like, this weird ritual. And she's like, this is weird as hell. We gotta get the fuck out of here, Val. So she just splits. Um, and the Ice Witch ends up following them and almost catching them, but turns around at the last minute. Uh, so yeah, Quinn then writes a report that, like, hey, Ash doesn't have the power to protect her people, but she's chill. Uh... Any alliance that's under Sejuani or Lysandra is going to be a real big problem to us. Do you think Lysandra, like, melts if she leaves the front yard? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's getting too hot. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> get back north. That's why turned back. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, I am melting. Oh, man. <laughs> that's a great... Dear me, I'm melting out here. <laughs> I need some lemonade. <laughs> nice mint <name>, julep. <laughs> That's how I remember I like her this. voice. <laughs> She's like, oh. But yeah, this thing is really cool, and I wish it was like... Canon? Mainline. So, yeah. yeah, right? A lot of this still seems pretty fucking relevant. Like, yeah. There's like, a, there's like a tiny bit of details that I think feel like would need to be tweaked, but like the majority of this stuff is like still what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. In, the, in her bio... I think it says that she's done missions like outside of Demacia, including in the Frail Yard. So I feel like, like yeah. you said, just make a few tweaks to this and it could just easily be that mission, right? Before the Mage Rebellion and shit. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 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 But yeah, those are all the, those are all the stories. She is part of one cinematic. It's very important. Uh, Tell Stones, <laughs> King's Gambit. Okay, what happens in this? Uh, what do you see? Quinn is losing to Valor in <laughs> Telstone. <laughs> That's way fucking cuter than I thought it was going to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Well, well uh, that's, uh, that's, that's Quinn. That's uh, Quinn. Canon Quinn, yeah. Yeah. About what I expected. Yeah. 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 She's fine. She's fun. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a lot, of, a lot of potential. A lot of things she could do. <laughs> I, I would like... There's a love. Yeah. Yeah. I would read a story about Quinn. I would read a Garen First Shield, but just Quinn, Ooh, about like... okay. I mean, maybe even about like another Frel Yordian expedition or some shit like that. Ooh, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe like... I'm trying to think of where else she could go, you know? Maybe they get kind of wind of something Void-related, and she's trying to check out what the fuck that's about. That could be interesting. Yeah. Sure. Or like, uh, yeah, Bob, going to the. I was gonna say, like, if she if she heard some void shit, going to Sharima too, because I'm sure, like, running. I into mean, Kaisa. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, Demacians are real. Uh, they're real against Noxus for like their expansionism. I'm sure they would have some strong thoughts about fucking Azir. <laughs> mm. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But would I mean, Quinn think... get along with Azir? Or mm. would Valor, rather? Both, oh, I don't think both, both, like, both birds? Yeah. No, that's... You know what? Just because they're both birds. okay? Right? Come on, John. <laughs> don't pair up the two only birds you know together like that. You think that's she, fucked up. her and Swain get along? Like, you know, because they both got birds? <laughs> mm, yeah. I mean, you were just pairing her and Talon. Because <laughs> they have talons. No, it's a bird yeah, okay. game. It's a quirk. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> And it's right, that, it's... like, love-hate thing. It's like Garen, Katarina. That's another thing he and Quinn could bond over. Like, oh, those Noxians. We hate them, but they're also kind of fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid, like, sexy Noxians. Foxians. Noxians. <laughs> Fox 
Noxians. So John God said stupid sexy Noxians, right as Mark said Foxians. <laughs> I'm sorry you got one up by Mark there. That was much better. No, no, no. There's, uh, there's room enough for, uh, for all. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Right, what we talking about? Y'all want, y'all want to hear about some AUs? Yeah, I opened up the skins. Yeah. So people don't think I'm just playing on my phone. I look at the skins. That yeah, I'm playing vampire survivors while we do. The Honestly, it's fucking tempting, but I won't. <laughs> I think I could listen and play vampire survivors. So uh, could saying. you listen, look at try skins, it, and it. play vampire? No, like <laughs> try it. <laughs> You're just gonna hear me like, oh, this fucking bats. Goddamn garlic, <laughs> fucking ballsack bullshit. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, we got Silver Age first. Silver Age. The Rift's greatest superheroes and most dastardly villains oh. available at a comic store near you. <laughs> so it's Phoenix Quinn. It's just Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Oh, although yeah. not ability wise. No, uh, the daring duo <laughs> Quinn and the Phoenix Valor are always near when crime is afoot. Combining their legendary powers, they clean up the streets of New Valoran with a well-placed arrow and a burning flame of justice. So they're the same, but Valor's got fire. Yeah, yeah he's okay. but fire, fire, yeah, but fire, <laughs> but fire. That's that is a very common uh, AU. Uh, <laughs> she looks like Sejuani in this one. So we got Wode Tribe, which uh, it's like she went up there and she's like, "I'm gonna become one of." She went went native. <laughs> she said yes to Egrid. Oh. oh. Okay. I like it. Few can survive a journey through the frozen. <laughs> Are you laughing at the way your voice talking? That's what my voice just did. I was going to make fun of you when I was like, he's probably <laughs> self conscious about it. Don't make fun of him. You! <laughs> that was a straight up freak moment. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, he's, he's I'm going, finally hitting puberty, guys. He's going through puberty after all this time. I'm pretty pissed off I hit the gray hair before I hit the puberty, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you get unlucky. Phew. <laughs> Phew <laughs> can survive the journey through the frozen tundra of the north. Oh, maybe it's the most I'm thinking you're a woman on the moon. <laughs> I doubt it. They'll just think I'm my own son on the phone. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to control his voice yet. <laughs> anyway, few can survive. Ah, uh, few can survive a journey through the frozen tundra of the north. If the cold doesn't kill you, the woad surely will. <laughs> and this is Woad Scout Quinn. Pity those poor souls lost in the northern. <laughs> This is going to take longer than this fucking Star Guardians. Star Guardians for sure. uh, <laughs> Quinn, scout of the Woad tribe, will always it. find them, and those who cross her path are said never to return. Mm-hmm. Who says they never return? Who knows? This is one of those skins where, like, Riot doesn't know what to do with female faces <laughs> because she just looks like a whole ass different fucking person in this one. Mm. Like, if you just crop mm. that head out, you would not think that that's Quinn. No. Yeah. Although, gun to my head, I couldn't describe a single feature about Quinn other than the fact that she's got a giant-ass bird. <laughs> bird and a bird. crossbow on her hand. I don't know anything about her face. <laughs> Only it's not even on her hand sometimes. And sometimes she's holding a standalone, like, <laughs> one-handed crossbow. So Riot can't figure it out, even. It's true. <laughs> Uh, all right. We gotta move on, though. <laughs> Next up, we got Warden. Uh, the Protectorate was an order dedicated to enforcing a rigid, unforgiving system of laws in an attempt to slow the seemingly inevitable rise of the Mage Lords. Though the order itself was disbanded long ago, Wardens now don their armor as they lie in wait for the opportunity to strike against the descendants of their ancient enemy. And this one is Warden Quinn. 
The Protectorate of Old gained its power from bonds. Bonds between comrades, bonds to armor, bonds to its edicts. Quinn follows in the footsteps of her ancestors, having forged a bond with a familiar she has named Valor, in honor of the Protectorate's central tenet. Hmm. Okay. So the bonds, bonds, bonds. Okay. Bonds, okay. bonds. That's Stocks and bonds, all I baby. Heard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up, we got Be Mine, set in a world where romantic where romance dominates. Each of these champions wear romantically themed attire. This one's Heartseeker Quinn. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a dove. Quinn takes up the mantle of the Heartseekers to channel her inner romantic, peppering the battlefield with dozens of razor sharp arrows and giant stinging bird scratches. Okay. Okay. Birds, but love. Okay. Okay. <laughs> love birds, baby. And love quack. Why didn't they make it? Baby love quack. <laughs> Bilgewater, burning time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bilgewater, where fortunes are made at the end of a gun. Anything you might need can be found at the slaughter docks, whether that be some hired hands, sea monster stew, or the captain who will send you to your watery grave. I don't want that. Corsair Quinn. For enterprising pirate crews, Quinn is a highly sought-after lookout, though she comes at a high price for someone typically hidden away in the crow's nest. Then again, how many other hired hands can take out half a boarding party before they make it off their ship? Pretty cool. I never noticed Quinn was in this, because this is the splash that has the shark Aatrox and Daddy Garen. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I never even saw fucking Quinn. Someone else is also in the background. Is that Mal- Malf- I think Who Mal- the fuck is that? Malphite. 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 Malkai. He's, like, the ship. One of them. Never noticed. Yeah. You can't put that shark over there and Daddy Garen. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. me to see Quinn. She also looks hot, though. She's just really... Everyone in that splash can get it. Everyone in the splash Malphite. is hot. Did I just say Malphite, Malphite even? Hang on. Let me zoom in on Malphite. Check out check out those portcullises on Malphite. I mean... Cannon to hoy. Give me another glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe. Uh, finally, we have Star Guardian. When the hell did she have Star Guardian skin? Very recently. July 2022. Yeah. Okay, very recently. In a vast and dark universe, young warriors are chosen by fate to protect the light of the stars. They're destined to burn bright, but collapse as furiously as they shine. Uh, now, this is now separated into seasons. Oh, um, so, oh, Quinn is okay. in season four, which is, is the latest season. <laughs> She's a rising moon. Um... <laughs> So, ancient enemies appear in Valorant City, scarred by Zoe's invasion, uh, now defended by a new generation of Star Guardians. As darkness gathers in the skies above, Kaisa and Akali prepare their untested squad for a fight with forces beyond their comprehension, and the true threat that awaits beyond. This one, Star Guardian Quinn. A Star Guardian duo from another city, Quinn and her familiar Valor are inseparable companions. And a good thing, too, since they carry the hopes and dreams of their hometown along with them. A calculating recon specialist with a knack for guerrilla strikes, she brings a new breed of tactics to the fight to save the city, though she might need some time to warm up to all her new, highly enthusiastic squad mates. And then Valor's got its own stuff here, too. Oh. Though it's far from the nest it once called home, Valor remains a vigilant protector of this strange new city, Perched on Quinn's shoulder, it shares her point of view and her nostalgia for the days of their youth. Of course, there's plenty to see and scout in Valorant City, but the skies seem just a little bit more gray. And this has a Legends of Runeterra level up quotes, too. Um, so, Valor may be a magical star guardian familiar, but to Quinn's dismay, he isn't above fighting the park pigeons for a few extra crumbs. <laughs> and, uh... This monster may be big, Valor, but that can't stop us. Let's blind it with the brilliance of starlight. And finally, show him how we shine, Valor. I want to so. see Valor fucking up pigeons. Like, <laughs> this giant eagle just coming uh, in and just, like, fighting, like, 100 New York City pigeons. I don't know. Just to, like, st- steal their fucking French fries. Right. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Fucking love some French fries right now. <laughs> <laughs> now she shows up briefly in the Shadow of a Doubt cinematic, 
Uh, she's in some pictures Akali's flipping through at the beginning of the cinematic. She's there. <coughs> Great. She's not in any of the cool parts. <laughs> Uh, and then she's in the visual novel, Another Sky, which is the kind of in-client event that was happening for the Star Guardian event earlier this year. Um, basically, after the big initial battle against Fiddlesticks, Quinn and Rel join Akali and Kaisa's school. And they kind of let them know, hey, we're Star Guardians too. Hoo-ho! And uh, Kaisa's like, cool, come be on our team. Uh, so she and Rel are from a small town named Kiso, and uh, they didn't talk much before becoming Star Guardians. Um, but uh, due to being isolated from the rest of the Guardians, Quinn had to train Rel with help from, it says, the official Star Guardian Daily Planner. And I really want to know where that came from and who initially wrote that. But apparently there's an official <laughs> this is what Star happened. Guardian Daily Planner. This is what happened to the <laughs> Journal of Justice writer. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, she's like, she's with the team, but nothing nothing special to note in her mm. special interactions basically her the the cool shit you unlock by raising your relationship with her is like she does a school project Woo! Ooh. so that's pretty is it, cool is it like a diorama <laughs> is it like a, a theme what, it's kind of the... <laughs> like a report on uh i think like um her uh, uh, old old town i want to say wow thrilling exactly. wow. all right <laughs> it wasn't great she worked on it with kaisa and rel and it was gonna akali was gonna work on it too but akali really just wanted to work with kaisa and then kaisa invited, all right well that's the use uh, everybody <laughs> quinn and then quinn invited rel and then akali left <laughs> what grade did she get whole thing quinn told me to tell you that rel heard <laughs> from kaisa <laughs> Uh, oh, so lay on those fun facts honey buddy oh i got some fun facts for oh, you oh you got some fun facts for me yeah uh quinn <laughs> is voiced by lauren mayhew nice great voice lauren great voice lauren <laughs> and she was actually uncredited for the longest time but she mm. came back to voice quinn in legends of runeterra too and that was kind of the first time that anyone actually knew who voiced her there was like a whole community dedicated to trying to figure out who the fuck voiced Quinn. Because they and also they, all liked her voice like we did. Probably. <laughs> and they didn't know until Legends of Runeterra came out. All right. I think she's like a singer. I, I was looking her up a little bit and I oh. noticed she has a lot of, yeah. That voice doesn't. Yeah. Oh, the name sounds familiar. Quinn used re-explored themes from a champion concept known as the Eagle Rider, who was an entirely different champion. Hmm. Uh... During playtesting, Quinn's old passive used to call down Valor to suppress an enemy champion if they brought her below 30% of her maximum health. Ooh. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yes. Powerful. Um, uh, also, we mentioned that uh, Quinn is a ranger knight. Um, we kind of mentioned like the, the rarity of this. So there are rangers in the Demacian military, but not all rangers have the rank and privileges of being a knight because you need... Um, to be a knight, especially as a commoner, you need a sponsorship from a noble house. And the the Bouvels didn't just vouch for Quinn and Valor, but they also sponsored their ascension to become a knight and paid for and equipped her with the necessary oh. uh, resources she needs. So they were a big reason that she is a knight. Okay. Um, and then we mentioned this in the Kion episode, but Quinn is the first champion whose name starts with Q back when Q was the very last letter that did not have a champion uh, associated with it. Uh, Quinn's dance reference is uh, Are You That Somebody by Aaliyah. That is old school. It's old. I mean, I... Damn. Aaliyah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah. And then finally, her crossbow is made of the horns of a tuskvor, the same creature oh. that killed her brother. That's pretty cool. Brutal. Yeah. Fuck your tusks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I meant what I said. <laughs> that's yeah, Quinn. That's Quinn. Yeah. What did her old old used to be? She got like changes not too long ago. And I'm trying to remember what Quinn used to do. Her old yeah. really was what changed in her passive. Didn't you become Valor? Was that something that happened? 
<laughs> like, didn't you trade out? Like, Quinn disappeared and Valor came in instead? Yeah. Rather than and her being carried? I think Right, and then you were melee, and then you had to... And, like, your, your abilities have changed, and, like, one yeah. would become, like, a... It's all... It, this is kind of sounds, sounding kind of correct. Like, she wouldn't <laughs> yeah. get carried around like she does now. Mm-hmm. I Weird. remember. So. Yeah, okay. None of this. No? I played her a little bit, because I, I yeah. wanted to, like... Quinn, I wanted to play her, but I can't. I still yeah. can't play Quinn to this day. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It, she's she's kind of weird. Laner, so yeah, yeah. All right, well, that was Quinn. Any final thoughts? Oh, uh, um, for her, I like short her better story. in theory than in execution. Okay, yeah, wow, maybe. You both dumped him at the same time. Sure, yeah. <laughs> That's how we do, baby. <laughs> yeah. You know. I, I agree with that. Um, like I said, she's just on the side of interesting for me. Um, she's not the most like crazy, unique, cool character. Uh, and I was just going to say for her rules of survival story, she has some pretty cool art. It's this kind of hand-drawn, oh, yeah. kind of inked mm. uh, black and white. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, that was Quinn. Thank you for listening. Uh, we have a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> It's at Loreheads. We also have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash Loreheads. We're a little wonky right now because of the holidays, but John generally will stream once a week. Um, he alternates between TFT and a random indie game. Yeah. 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 We have a YouTube as well where we post these and um, we'll be, uh, we have like a parody songs that John does. God, my brain's not working today. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And these, um, these episodes too, uh, in case you you haven't been following, are recorded. Uh, you know the video is being recorded now too, and those are um, this one and also moving forward our Patreon exclusives for like the five dollar plus Patreon tier. Um, but you can also see highlights on our YouTube um, in YouTube Shorts and on yeah. TikTok. Yeah, we do have a TikTok League of Loreheads. We never really posted anything there, so I never talked about it. But uh, yeah, John's gonna post some some little clips and highlights from the episodes yeah we uh have a discord as well it's linked in uh the description of this episode if you want to join in on some discussions john and mark are there more frequently than i am but we're we're all around (laughs) and like john said we do have a patreon thank you so much to all of our patrons but a very special thank you to our madarda tier patrons uh big man gnomes (laughs) chloe things kindred enjoyer king of hearts shupa moustache and Techno Robert. Uh, yeah. If you guys were um, rangers who wanted to become knights, I would find a way to become nobility just to vouch for you. Wow. Ooh, I know where you were going to go. Yeah, me, me. I never one. do either. <laughs> <laughs> he just well, starts a sentence. And <laughs> a little peer behind the curtain, folks. I never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he says with 10 pages of notes on every fucking champion. <laughs> Um, also, this is just something that's worth mentioning, probably in all the episodes moving forward, because we don't know which ones y'all are listening to, if you listen to all of them, or just pick your favorite champions, but, um, we are probably, uh, we are recently, um, uh, probably by the time this episode comes out, actually, uh, going to start having ads, um, kind of before or after, maybe some in the middle of, uh, the episode, um, but just as, just for some visibility, we can set which um, ads we don't want to be associated with the podcast. We can't specifically pick which ads are. So if you hear any ads that you feel like are either inappropriate or do not belong on the podcast, (laughs) let us know and we will remove them Um, because we know there are certain types of ads that we don't want here, um, but we're still getting used to the system. Um, So uh, it'll probably take us a little bit to figure out, but... Um, yeah, just yeah. reach out to us. Let us know because if you don't want them there, we don't want them there. That could be on Discord. Yeah. Just make sure you tag us or on Twitter, or you can email us. It's League of Loreheads at gmail dot com. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okie dokie, and be sure to join us next week because we're gonna start on the R's, uh, and we'll have a guest. That feels so late in the alphabet. R. It does. Right? Wild. There's mm-hmm. a lot of R's though, and a, I think a lot, a lot of S's. Yeah. I think there's more S's than any other. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep this going through the year, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we're gonna talk about the Charmer Rakan. 
and probably Zaya too. 